Hello there, my name's Tracy Elsom and I'm an independent Stampin' Up! demonstrator based in Canada. Welcome to my Paper Craft With Me YouTube channel. Today is Monday and that means there's another What Will You Stamp challenge launched today. And this week the stamp set they are using is Winter Woods. Now as a member of the design team for the What Will You Stamp challenge, I have to make a project in advance so that there's some inspiration there for you to see so this is me from right from the very beginning start from scratch actually thinking about what i'm going to do and what project i'm going to show you on monday so this is the stamp set it's a rubber stamp set and um, there's some birch trees there's a christmas tree there's some tree trunks there um, pine cone and a little piece of pine branch it's a shadowy bit and one sentiment really nice set and the detail on this is amazing um the the tree you can virtually see every individual pine needle on it it's just a phenomenal set and also there are some dies that you can get that go with it and i have them here i know i have them here <laughs> I keep them in a stamp case. I've just got some adhesive magnet there and these are the, the, the dies that go with this. I will be putting a cover on here as well. So you've got this image, this die cuts out the main tree and this one cuts out the centre of the tree and would also cut some little um, branches that you can pop out. Uh, then you've got two birch trees here. They don't coordinate with or they don't match the, the stamp, but they do coordinate with it. There's a little branch there. There's a nice curve there which can be used for scenery. And here you've got two dies that are exactly the same. These two dies cut out this pine cone. These three dies are exactly the same and they cut out this little pine needle branch there. And the idea is that you can stamp it twice run it through the big shot once stamp it three times run it through the big shot once so it's a nice way of getting uh, your projects made very quickly and i think with the pine cones and the branches the idea is that people will probably want to make little mini wreaths with them and that will save an awful lot of time so i haven't decided yet if i'm going to use the dies but we'll see okay so let's start with a piece of Whisper White card. I've got some kitchen paper here because I'm going to do some sponging, I believe. <laughs> um, and it just makes it easier for me to hang on to the paper and not get myself absolutely covered in ink. Okay, so I'm just pulling out a few different colours to make a sky with. There we go. So we have Highland Heather. Pacific Point, Blueberry Bushel, and Knight of Navy. So let's create a sponged background to start with. So here's my Pacific Point. I have an individual sponge for every one of my colours, as you can see. So they're just off here to the side. And I'm just going to just sponge the whole thing and look it's blotchy and you can see marks on it and you know what it really doesn't matter lots of people seem to think that sponging is this magical you know really difficult process and to be honest i don't think it needs to be i really don't think it needs to be as difficult as we might want to make it Okay, so that'll do for Pacific Point. Wow, that's a bright colour. Now let's bring Highland Heather into the mix. Okay, so... And again, I'm just going over the top. And you'll find with sponging that as you add more ink, any marks that you have, they kind of blend out. You, you don't notice them. So, I mean, you can see this really obvious mark there. And then by the time I've added my next layer of colour on top, it's kind of gone. You don't really notice it so much there now. Okay. I think that will do for the, for the Highland Heather. Uh, 
Now let's go for the next darkest colour, which is Blueberry Bushel. Here's my sponge for that. And again, I'm not going over the whole piece, but I'm just sort of selectively adding bits of blue to it. Just adding a little bit more now you'll see that kind of that purples disappearing a little bit it's still there but it's not so bright you wouldn't necessarily say oh look there's purple on there um, but it's it's useful to have in the background um, I find rather than having just blue in my my night skies I like to have a little bit of something else Make, seems to make it a little bit more um, realistic. Okay, this is Night of Navy, and I'm going to add a little bit more. And with this one, I'm going to sort of almost stick to the edges now, just to bring in some darker colour. center and that gives me almost like a lighter area in the middle and you see I'm not particularly badly stained which is always a good thing that's a successful sponging effort for me I think okay so there is my background now what I want to do is I am going to bring my wink of Stella this is a clear wink of Stella brush I'm going to give it a good shake and I'm going to squeeze it and I'm going to watch this barrel to see when you can see that you can see when the ink comes in and in fact it's already started to drop now because I've made that brush tip really wet with that ink I can now flick it bang it on my finger and as well as splattering Wink of Stella on my hand and everywhere else, I have got some nice clear Wink of Stella on there. And if you can see that, that's really pretty. I like that. Now I'm going to put that aside to dry. Now, the Wink of Stella obviously is a liquid and it's got some um, alcohol in there. And what it will do is it will actually lighten some of the areas where we've layered the, the colours on, the Pacific Point, the Highland Heather, Blueberry Bushel, and then Night of Navy. It will, to a certain extent, lift off the colour at the top, and you will find that you'll get some little speckles under there that are a little bit lighter. But, um, yeah, I'm pleased with that. Okay, so there we are with that one. Now, what do I do next? I think... I'm going to do the trees. Yeah, I'm going to do the trees next, I think. I'm going to go with that one, which is the big one. And I'm going to grab a large block. This is, <sighs> these are all the stamp blocks that Stampin' Up! make and I've got them in the case. So I'm going to need the e-block for that. Nice little case, that. Great for travelling. Never lose your stamp blocks. And stamp that. Let's put that on there. Now, I think I'm going to want some more white card. Let's grab another piece of white card. I'm going to take this away because it's probably going to distract too much. So now I'm going to take this image. And I'm going to stamp it using shaded spruce. I want it to be quite dark because this is supposed to be a night scene. Oops. But I want to, I do want to be able to, to see it. I'm going to stamp it once there. I'm going to stamp it again without re-inking the stamp. There we go. 
now I've got a bit of a halo. Now that happened because I had ink on the edge of my stamp and I rocked it. So that's what happens when you do that. So let's go with that. That's quite a juicy um, stamp pad, which is why the detail is a bit missing. Okay, so let's bring my trusty big shot in. Magnetic platform and those dies we were looking at. So, stamp up and stand up and make sure I get that in the right place. Get my head in the shot. to cut this one out even though I've got a halo around it because I'm hoping <laughs> that the halo will be cut off by that die there we go waste not want not haha <laughs> all the halo has disappeared so we haven't lost that piece entirely Okay, so there are my trees. Now I'm just going to bring this back in now. It's probably not too bad. And there's my tree. And I think I might want some thinking about do I want to put it like that with a couple of them. that or am I going to use that as a I think that's the th nice thing with a piece like this you can turn it around you can make it do other things and I'm wondering if I should do that hmm good question and I might not even use that at all. We will see. Hmm. Now I'm not sure. I'm not sure whether I like that green up against that blue. I'm wondering whether I should go with just black. Let's just make it black and see if that makes a difference. So I'm going to clean off my stamp. chamois. Let's close up that shaded spruce and we'll bring it in my memento pink. Grab another piece of card. And let's see what happens when I do it in black. I might prefer that one. black's going to be right either but we will we'll try it out we'll have a look sometimes when you're creating a card sometimes you need to try it two or three times and try one more And this time I'm going to go with an old favourite, Mossy Meadow. Wash my stamp again. And this time let's try Mossy Meadow. This is an old, an old colour that I would normally have turned to before they retired it. And since they brought it back, oh actually... Do you know what? I think that could be it. I think that could be the colour I'm looking for. That's 
certainly looks a lot better. Let's grab the big shot and we'll cut those pieces out and we'll see if that makes a difference. Sometimes you have to just stamp a few, cut a few out, try them. I won't throw away those other pieces. I will actually use them on another project. It just may be that they don't work with the background that I have at the moment. So maybe if I did a snow daylight type background, that would be better, but we'll see. Okay, so there's one. Line up this one. Oh, I do love the fact that I can just cut this out without having to fussy cut. I don't mind fussy cutting, but to be honest, sometimes it's nice not to have to. There we are. So there's that one. Move this away. Bring my background in again. That seems a little nicer. That seems a bit better. And I probably won't use the whole tree. I'll use a little bit of a tree, I think. Maybe have two of them like that. Now I need to think about a sentiment. Now the sentiment that's in the stamp set is called Thinking of You This Season. So let's pull that one out. meadow again that's nice like that. okay let's grab the big shot again I have some layering dies and I'm going to cut this out with So that's my magnetic platform and my cutting pad. And I think probably the stitched framelits will be the ones to go for. Make sure that it's nice and straight. And grab the other plate, which is there. I'm still using that old one yeah, that plate is cracked but it works so that's what we're using okay so the way that sits against the blue I think that's really nice how that sits against the blue I'm just going to play with those I don't like this great big gap here at the bottom there would need to be something else down there I think maybe a third tree maybe could well be what I need. Let's go for a third tree. So there we are, Mossy Meadow. Bring the tree in again, ink it up. Straight down, straight up. And the machine again. See what I mean about my nice little things? So they're still working. They don't look pretty, but they still work. Well, I have just completed the project, and after I'd finished it, I discovered that my 
video had cut out. So I'm afraid you get a here's one I created earlier. Right, so when you last saw the video I was cutting out this tree, I attached the first two to the background with multi-purpose liquid glue and then the third one that I cut out I attached that with stamping dimensionals and then having turned it over I could just trim along the edge of the background piece using my paper snips. The sentiment comes from the Winterwood stamp set. It's the only sentiment in the set called it says thinking of you this season and I stamped that onto Whisper White card with Mossy Meadow ink to coordinate with the trees and then I cut that out with the third number three stitch shaped framelit dies uh, using my Big Shot and that's number three counting from the smallest upwards. Then on the back of that sentiment I attached a piece of this silver metallic edge ribbon with a couple of mini glue dots and then put stamping dimensionals on the black of the sentiment, attached it to my card base and then the whole thing was fixed onto a whisper a thick whisper white card base with stamp and dimensionals so this is popped up and these two are popped up on the inside really simply finished off a piece of whisper white card stamped with the trees a couple of times with mossy meadow ink attached inside with multi-purpose liquid glue and then the same for the front of the envelope again the trees stamped with multi-purpose uh, with mossy meadow ink even um, making sure that I've left enough room for the address and to who it's from the stamp and on the inside of the card there's enough room there for your sentiment so there we are that's my project for the what will you stamp challenge blog this is the stamp set that we're featuring so if you've got this stamp set do join our challenge and um, it would be nice to see what you can create so if you want any more information uh, you want some more inspiration and ideas for paper crafting do visit my blog at www.papercraftwithme.com you'll also find links to my online store where you can buy all the stampin up items you can see here um, 24 7 for delivery anywhere in Canada so until then I'm going to find out what went wrong with my video but I'll leave you to craft have a great day bye